Hi friends, welcome to the Asp Unlimited app, or if you're watching on YouTube on Active Self Protection Extra, I'm here with my friend Jonathan Bloom from Refiners Firearms in Anthem, we're at C2 Tactical in Scottsdale. He has recently made the transition to the red dot, but like most of us, we're riding the struggle bus a little bit, and so we're gonna work on some stuff. Yes, please. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to Asp staff building handgun and carbine skills, and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. So Jonathan, tell me, uh, why did you make the transition to a dot? Well, I wanted to try it. I've been shooting iron sights um, uh, since I've been in the, the journey of uh, defending myself with the firearm. Started with the 1911, uh, went from a full size to a compact officer size. Um, became very good with the 1911, very good with magazine and m malfunction clearances. I mean, out of necessity, became now, very proficient with it. And I'm just going to say, if you in your, uh, you know, your your journey to concealed carry through concealed carry, if you've never carried a 1911, I feel like you missed out on some stuff. I carried a 1911 for a while too because I mean, it's the gun that Moses carried in boot camp, so it's good enough for him. It's good enough for us, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm only serious. We also live in Arizona, the home of Gunsight, yeah. Jeff Cooper, the father of the modern American, you know, handgun and pistol technique. And so he was a 1911, died in, in the wool guy. So cool. But then you went to a smaller gun. Yeah, so the officer size uh, 1911 was, was heavy and thick, and it just wasn't very comfortable to, concert, to conceal carry every day. So I tried, went to the six hour P365XL, I've got uh, 12 rounds in the magazine plus one in the chamber. Yeah. I do still carry a side, uh, an extra magazine on the side. Um, so I've got 15 rounds in my, my spare magazine. And I love to conceal carry. Um, I'm actually, it's an outside the waistband okay. holster. Mm -hmm. um, I found that inside the waistband, it wasn't comfortable. I couldn't get a good, uh, my hand on the grip comfortably. So I went to an outside the waistband. I've always worn bulky clothes anyway. And so I conceal carry with an outside the waistband holster. It's a fine, fine choice. Now the pistol um, that I went to was the P365XL because it fit my hand well. I, I could have picked anything in the shop. I picked this because it fit my hand well and it was optic ready. Um, after carrying it for a while and becoming relatively smooth and, and consistent with the handgun, I went and put the Romeo uh, red dot on it, the Romeo Zero, uh, which is a single dot. Um, and ran it till it died um, about a year or so, six months, eight months, thereabouts, about eight months, I think. And so. Pretty typical with those SIG optics. Yeah, and it passed. Uh, so I just put the Holson 507K, uh, K on it. and it's the green, and it's a uh, option reticle is a dot, yeah. circle, or circle dot. Okay. Um, and I'm struggling uh, getting the optic on my eye on the optic quickly. Um, what's happening more times than I'm comfortable with, uh, especially from my concealed carry gun, is I'm actually can't really get the dot till I'm all the way extended. And then sometimes I'm having to fiddle. Oh, come on. We've all done that, right? Yeah. We've all seen it. You drive the gun out there and then you do this thing. Where'd but she I, go? I, yeah, I don't right? want to do that because I'm wasting time. I can see the front sight. So I'm used to seeing that front sight. I got the front sight, but the dot's nowhere to be found. Okay. That's my struggle. Oh, it's such a, this is such a normal Help. thing. This is such a normal thing, guys. And, and so if you're thinking about making the transition to the dot, I'll tell you where a lot of people make the transition is my eyes ain't what they used to be. And so I'm having a hard time seeing all the things and I can't see my front sight anymore because my arms ain't long enough or whatever. We make a transition to the dot and a pistol mounted optic is great. So we're going to make a couple changes, see if we can help Jonathan kind of find some stuff. First of all, it's the normal problem everybody has. Okay. Okay. And uh, a lot of people will say, well, the dot is, is unrelenting and it, it has a low margin and is difficult to find the dot. Hogwash. In my opinion, that's garbage. What I do today, if I can start a brand new shooter on a dot, I start them on a dot right away. And I do that because for the same reason when, uh, you know, you, you've got teenagers for golly sakes, yes, you know what I mean? You have kids. So if you're going to teach a kid to drive today, today, 2023, would you start them in a manual transmission or an automatic? An automatic. Why? Why Because that's what they're going to drive. The, a, that's what they're going to drive. B, it's one less thing to worry about. i got to worry about navigating the roads. I don't want to worry about my gear. What gear am I in and all those things. Later, 
if you're going to need to drive a, a manual, if you live in the rest of the world, or you want to drive a you know a little sports car or something like that, cool. I mean, we can learn the the manual transmission, and I think it's valuable to do so. Once you're really good with actually moving, piloting the vehicle, right? Correct. So I start new shooters out on dots because it's an automatic transmission. Okay. I don't have to think about front sight, rear sight, and all those things. But the first thing you're going to have to do as a guy who is dyed in the wool, front sight, hard front sight focus, is you have to completely tell your brain, stop that jump. Really? Okay. Uh, and here's the easiest way that I've ever found to do it. Okay, so when you're running iron sights, you have a front sight and a rear sight. Now when you're running a dot, your target is now your front sight. Really? So you know okay. how what you do here is your rear sight is a window you look through. Okay. Right? And that window that you look through lets you see the front sight. And you're looking, hey, is my front sight in, in the middle of the window? So you're not really focused on the rear sight at all, okay? You're focused instead on the front sight. This is this hard front sight shooting focus. That, that's probably how you've been raised that's and how correct. you shoot, right? Yes. Now, we can talk about all of that, in, and there's a whole bunch to talk about if you're still an iron shooter. But if you're tech Amish, if you're gun Amish, and you, you know, 1986 is the uh, epitome, we'll talk about that another day. But now, the, the optic window is your rear sight. Okay. And you just want to look through it and see your front sight. Your front sight is your target. It is the target. Yeah. Wow. And then that'll let the dot, what I'm asking is, is my dot hovering over my target? Okay? So I never want to look at my dot. I never want my visual focus to come back to my optic. I always want it out there on the target, and the target is the front sight. Now, what that this makes me... This is just wild. I've never heard anybody say that before. So it's... it's... And, I, I'm, and maybe I'm um, uh, just too old school, but this is, for me, um, um, amazing uh, content because I've always identified the target and then get the sights aligned, focus on the front sight, gentle press, and I've been very, very accurate with that. Sure. But this is different. Well, so, so here's the thing. What we see in real gunfights, right, is that they seldom stand still long. You know, as soon as they recognize you're trying to kill them, you're, we're trying to stop the threat. I get it. Please, internet lawyers, go ahead and, and have at it with me. You're, they, in their mind, you're pointing a gun at them and pressing the trigger. You're trying to kill them. Okay? You're trying to stop them being a deadly threat. They're going to move. Okay? And, sure. and in real gunfights, we do know highly trained people that see their front sight 100% of the time. Not saying you won't see your sights in a real gunfight. However, if I can keep my eyes on the threat, one of the things that we see that's a challenge for iron sight shooters is, is they start shooting somebody and they're focused on that front sight. I can't see what he's doing right now. And so he throws the gun and I shoot him five more times because I'm focused on the front sight and he's still standing there. And people go, oh my God, why'd you still shoot him? Without thinking about the fact, I wasn't looking at it. I was looking at my front sight. I see. Okay. okay. Whereas now I can, I can look at him, see what he's doing, see where he's going and I'm going to continue that. So I think it's got a tactical issue there and a tactical advantage to doing that. So, first thing I want to do is, as I bring this gun out, I maintain my focus here, and I hard maintain my focus here, okay? okay. On the target. Hard on focus the target. on the target. On the target. Thank now, you. Now, one of the best ways that we can do uh, to make you do that is I can include your optic. And if we do that, that will solve this problem for you and make that gun work great. So, let's try that and see if we can get him to really focus on the target first, shall we? When I, so, so people say this all the time, well, you know, you have backup iron sights, and those are training wheels to help you find the dot. Hogwash! You are, your body already knows how to find the dot. I promise you it is way easier than you think it is, okay? okay? So I'm going to teach you in a little bit how to make free throws. But first, we got to train your eyes a little bit to, to use that front sight focus, to use the front sight as a target focus, okay? And here is the magic training tool for that. And you're like, John, that looks like a piece of masking tape. It is a magic! piece of masking tape, because what we're going to do is we're going to occlude his optic. Well, I'm going to actually put a piece of tape over the front of it so you can't look through the optic to see your target. Okay, so I trust So let's you. put your ears on. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and are you, do you currently have uh, ammo in the gun? Yes. Okay, is it defensive ammo? No, it's full metal jacket. Perfect. I took my hollow points out for today's time. Perfect. Let's go ahead and let's safely draw your firearm to a ready position. All right, cool. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reach around and I am going to actually, boop, Put that over your optic. Now, here's the interesting thing. So if I put my gun up on and, and on the target, now, now here's the interesting bit. You immediately cannot see what the heck is through that optic can. I cannot, but now, I can see the target. Can, can you see the dot? Yes, I can. Can you see the target? I can. So what you're using there is you're using your non-dominant eye to see the target, and you're ha then you have to let, can you see, so see, now, now I just see, if you close your non-dominant eye. Close my non-dominant eye. And you drive the gun out, 
all you're going to see is is tape and wow. a dot, right? So now instead, no, open that that non-dominant eye if you can, yep. right? So go ahead and drive the gun out. Now what you should see is you should see a dot, a target, and it's got a little bit of, of tape over it, but it should hover over the target for you. Okay. Can you see it? I can. Now what I want you to do is put your finger on the trigger. Pick a, I mean, pick any target you want for the most accurate shot you could possibly shoot. Okay. okay? Now, question for you, reticle. Um, I have the option of circle dot or circle dot. Right now it's on circle only. What do you recommend? Uh, okay, why for, don't you for me safely to start and with? carefully holster and we can talk about that in a minute. Good holster. So, uh, okay, another thing for us to talk about. What do you recommend? I, I am of the absolute belief that everyone sees in a variety of ways and I'm not an expert in vision. I am an expert in aiming, in, uh, in how to use the gun, uh, I have a friend, Jeff Rabbit is his name. He comes to the national conference every year. He's um, a vision expert. He helps division one college athletes get pro contracts by teaching them how to see. He's a freaking genius on this stuff, okay? And I haven't had a chance to talk to Jeff enough about this, about I see different than you do. Okay. Okay, so the photons go into our eyeballs the same, but then how does my brain take those photons and say, hey brain, this is what's going on in your world. Uh, I, I'm of the opinion that the way that my eyes do that and my brain interprets that those signals is maybe different than yours okay and with that in mind which one is best man i can't tell you that i think that some experimentation okay. is in order i use personally i use the circle only because when i don't occlude my optic when i use a, a circle or, and a dot in my brain it's busy i have a hard time looking through that to the target when i use the dot only I run the risk of being like my stupid cats. I chase that stupid little dot all over the place. Wow. Okay, oh, I know exactly where the bullet's gonna go. It's gonna have to go, I don't want it to go here. I want it to go here, Yeah. right? And so I have a tendency to chase. When I have a circle and that, uh, then I look to the middle of the circle, I look through the circle to see my target. Is that acceptable? Yes, it's there and I let it fly. So for me to stay target focused, I like circle only. Okay. What is, what do you like? Neil loves a real fine dot on his SRO. Uh, Tim Heron really likes um, what I use with the, the circle only. Um, Brian Hill, one of the certainly best dot shooters in America today, runs a dot only, okay? Uh, and, and, you know, I could name them, list goes on and on, right? Those are the top guys that I know of uh, in the red dot world. And so, uh, which one's best for you? I'd say experiment a little bit. Okay. I'm going to experiment. So I've always used the dot, or at least when I, uh, on my AR-15s, I run a single dot. So I'm going to try what you recommend, or what works well for you, which is the circle. Yep. I have found for me, I can get headshots on a, a USPSA target or an IDPA target like this out to about uh, 30 yards okay. with a circle. Okay. Uh, I can get body, you know, C-zone body hits out to about 90. Okay. So question for you, you gave me an important instruction. Uh, we were gonna, uh, you asked me to get a, a specific point of aim. Yeah, yeah. So if I have a circle, what am I, how do I make sure I've got the same point of aim each and every time? So here's the interesting and fun part. Your eye knows how to find the middle of a circle. Where's the point of aim? It's the middle of the circle. Okay. So I center the so circle. So I'm looking at the target, focusing on the target. Yeah. I see the circle, but I stay focused at the center of the target. Wherever the it circle. is that I'm, that I'm aiming for. Center of the circle, Put the gentle circle press. into the center of it. And, and again, if I need a real precise shot, so if the target is smaller than the circle, if the target's bigger than the circle, well then guess what? If the circle's in the target, let it fly. Because you know it's gonna go in the middle of that, right? So if I'm aiming for the A zone here, my circle is certainly smaller than that. And so I just put the circle somewhere in the target and let it fly, okay? okay? If I have a, a target that the, the target is smaller than the circle, then I center the target in the circle. Center the target in the circle. Now, in that particular one, the Hollison that you have, it has hash marks at 12, 3, 6, and 9. Okay. Okay. So I will, at times, if my hash marks can give me some help, then I go, oh, okay, left and right. Yep, I'm there. Top and bottom, I'm there. But usually, I'm just going to look to center it up because your, your, your brain naturally looks for the center of a circle. Your brain wants the center of a circle. Okay. Uh, I, I honestly think this is hardwired in us as humans because, you know, babies, they, they look for faces and what's the shape of a face? It's a circle, right? So we are programmed to look in the middle of a circle, to look at someone's face in the middle of their head and that's the first thing a baby sees and wants to, to be around. So I think uh, whether you believe that that's evolution or, or God putting that in us, 
I, you know, I think that that is just hardwired into humans to find the middle of the circle. Okay. So I just put the middle of the circle. Now, if we're going A zone here, well then you just put the circle anywhere in the A zone and rock and roll. Now, if I want you to hit the letter D, the letter D is smaller than your circle. Okay. So then you have to put the D in the middle of the circle. Okay. All right, let's try it. Sounds good. So eyes open. Okay, you see your target? I do. Do you see your circle on the target? I do. Okay, take your time and keep the circle there. Let it do its thing. <laughs> Beautiful. And again, head box shot, no problem. All now again, keep seeing your target and just let the circle kind of flow over it. Yep, headshots all day long at seven yards. Easy peasy. And you couldn't see through your optic. That's, there's tape on the optic. <laughs> and then the funny part is, is after a little wow. bit, you forget about it, right? That's cool. You forget about the fact that oh your optic gosh. is occluded. I wasn't looking through the optic. You can't look through the optic. I occluded it. Dude, so, so you're not looking incredible. through the optic. Now, if I undo that, now what I have to do is say, no brain, stay focused here. I want you to, to take about the rest of the magazine and just experience that. You can do it A zone if you want, head box, shoot numbers. I don't care. <laughs> Big deep breath. Relax. You're having fun. You're on the range. Very good. All right, why don't you reload and then safely holster. Come talk to me here about your experience. Wow, that was awesome, John. Um, <laughs> Weird, right? That was incredible. I, I, seven yards, I've got a great group. Um, there's tape over my optic. So now that we're is gonna, crazy. That's wild. Yeah, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the optic off your, your the tape off your optic and we're gonna try to do the same thing. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna guarantee you so much time shooting irons. Your 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 heart goes, but I want I wanna come back into the front sight. Remember, the optic is your rear sight. Well, maybe we should keep the tape on because I did pretty good. Yeah, you did all right. <laughs> you can just run it that way if you got to have a gunfight. Now, I will say this. There are some people uh, with the visual stuff, like I say, that the occluded, occluded optic won't work um, okay. because they can't keep the eye open uh, while they're shooting. They just can't. Uh, I think that the beauty of the optic is, is that for most people, they can and they can keep both eyes open and they're not trying because i'm not trying to see the optic uh, if you've been on active self-protection extra for a while natalie uh, the range monkey her brain uh, her eye dominance switches so fast that she she can't keep both eyes open and shoot even with an optic she just can't do it and so um you know i said she could go work with jeff rabbit for eight months to try to train her eyes to do what they want to do or just close a freaking eye whatever but if you have to do that now continue to look I do want you to experience it again, though, with okay. the optic unoccluded uh, to see if I can go. Let me see what I can do. But I'll tell you, the thing that you can do here to get that really myelinated for yourself is in your dry practice routine, occlude that optic. Oh, include it. Or, uh, yeah, so put a tape on it. Yep. So just get a little piece During of tape. During my dry practice. During your dry practice. Okay. And now I'm seeing again, I have to use that non-dominant eye, which for me is my right eye, for you is your left eye, to, to see my target to float the, the dot over the top of it. And that guarantees that you're staying target focused. Because the second you come back to look at your optic, your target disappears and you have no idea where the optic is. So I gotta say, um, had you told me this before I showed up here, I would have said you're full of shit. <laughs> I, I'm serious, I just, I cannot believe that with tape on my optic, focusing on the target, that I've got fist sized groups. Yeah, because- just, That's amazing to again, me, it just so this it blows is... my mind. It's awesome, thank you. And here's the beauty, right? Thank you. So basically what you've done is you've gone to an automatic transmission gun. Okay. So now I don't have to worry about where's my front sight in relation to my rear sight and all these things. And so now I'm tracking multiple planes with multiple different stuff to get hits. Now I just say, is my dot over the target? If my dot's over the target and I can keep it there, so we can say grip is the master, sight set the pace, trigger is the servant. And then if I, if I can say, hey, yes, it is. My, my target, you know, my optic is over the target. 
send it. And if my grip is good, my and I can keep that there while I depress the trigger, it's going to go there every time. So I've made my life easier as a defensive okay. shooter, uh, which to me is money. Okay. So I know we got one more to work on, and we're going to work on that with John next time.